best idols for last. And today we have Blake Lewis with us. Hey, Blake, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Doing good. Did that last song sound a little familiar to you? <laughs> It is. I haven't heard that one in a minute. <laughs> yeah, right? Actually, it's one of our uh, most requested songs on uh, one of our AAA formats here. Awesome. Pretty cool. Amazing. <laughs> so, cool. yeah. Happy New Year to you, by the way. Yes, happy 2011. I know. Where Where were you uh, at midnight on New Year's Eve? I was uh, rocking a show in Seattle. Oh, well, you're from Seattle. Yeah, so oh. I went back home. Oh, that's nice. For the holidays, and then uh, ended up playing a show there. Very that. cool. Home for the holidays. Gotta love that. And getting to perform. Yeah, it was great. All the friends came out, and, you know, it was good. It was a good time. Very nice. Now, everybody knows you as the beatboxer from, what was it, season six? I guess so. <laughs> you guess so. You should know. <laughs> I believe I was on a show around that time. Yeah. That was about four years ago. I know. It seems like it's been 10 years ago. It's been so yeah. long. So much has happened in four years. Yeah, absolutely. And so much happened in that a couple amount of uh, a couple of months it was that you were on Idol? Um, me? Yeah, you. you. I mean, you went from, you know, your audition where Simon was like, oh, I don't think you're, you know, as good as you think you are. And then... Yeah, oh, the whole experience was crazy. It seemed like I was on the show for a year, you know. Well, I'm I mean, sure. From the time you, like, audition and to the time you, like, make it on the show, it's, like, good. Yeah. You know, three months in between there. That's crazy. Uh, but it seems like a, yeah. a lot longer, I'm sure, and especially if you're on the other end. Definitely. Now yeah, what, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, what <laughs> made you... Like, this is really happening. That, I mean, I can't even imagine, but what made you audition for American Idol? Um, no, <laughs> my friend, I guess, um, literally it happened within five hours my friend just called me and was like what are you doing tomorrow and i said nothing and he's like i'm taking you to audition for american idol that's it i mean i didn't want to go <laughs> but you didn't want to go no i'd never seen the show and uh well that's not true i've seen it like five minutes i think i saw like a little bit of the finale <laughs> with like kelly clarkson oh but that was like years before you even got on the show yeah that was the only thing i'd ever seen and then i'd seen uh taylor hicks's board commercial and I was like what is this <laughs> guy about no thank yeah. you so um and then yeah <laughs> and then I, and then you ended up in the, the final two yeah it was kind of crazy did you ever think that that it would happen crazy, that you'd make yeah. it to the finals no I never thought I would make it on a television show called American Idol either yeah. so <laughs> very true well life's crazy like that I mean you never know tomorrow Hold so yeah, many opportunities. Things, you never know. Yeah, things happen for a reason. I just go with the flow of life and sure. enjoy myself doing it. So. Good attitude. Now, <laughs> we've been getting a lot of questions on Twitter. We've been promoting that you're going to be on on Twitter. And someone wanted yeah. to know what your favorite performance on American Idol was. Of mine? Yeah, of yours. Um, oh, man, that's really tough. I mean, I, I, I really, each week I, you know, I kind of was trying to top myself. Mm -hmm. Um that's really, you know, and the first, the, the thing that I really enjoyed about my, my season is that they don't do this anymore is we got to the first three weeks, we actually got to pick our own music and we didn't have to like, you know, fall under, oh, this week's country or this week's, oh, that's uh, right. you know, and uh, I got to pick three of my favorite bands coming out of the gate to represent who I was. And, uh, you know, I, I came out and <laughs> fought with the producers. They wanted me to beatbox and... Uh, so I sat down in a chair and sang a ballad for my first song, which was Keen. And then the next week was Virtual Insanity. And then the next week was 311 all mixed up. That's crazy. And, uh, you know, so. So you don't uh, have a favorite. Each week was amazing. My yeah. favorite. I mean, when I, I'm really proud of myself with my arrangement uh, for the Bon Jovi week. Uh, you, my you favorite. About name Because everyone, I mean, even Bon Jovi was skeptical. and. Mm hmm you know, I wasn't, I knew it was going to be fun and, and different, and, you know, I never called it American Idol, I called it the Blake Lewis show, I didn't really, <laughs> you know, I wasn't there for anyone but myself, you know, and I fought with the producers all the time because of that, but it worked out, yeah. you know, you know, I get to be the, <laughs> I'm very rebellious in nature, and, you know, <laughs> it, it worked out in my favor, I guess, and, very cool. I mean, do you think, okay, do you think that you had an advantage because you threw the beatboxing into it? No one had ever done that before on the show. Or do you think it was a little bit of a disadvantage? Um, it's always been a, 
a balancing issue for me. And okay. for me, especially on that show, because to me, beatboxing is an, an amazing art form. And I know these producers were looking at it as a gimmick to, you know, <laughs> generate revenue for their show. So mm -hmm. I had a, uh, a very hard time with it on the show. And I actually only beatboxed maybe three times on that show, but they just kept putting it in every package, you yeah. know, and they made a gimmicky. And, you know, I actually, <laughs> they don't show a lot of the stuff behind the scenes, but I said, no, I don't want to beatbox for them, you know. Really? It's hard to be put on the spot, you know, mm. as a beatbox, because I was told, getting even auditioning the show, my friends had auditioned for it, and that were beatboxers, and they didn't make it on the show because of that, so... Um, for me, it was really up to me with my arrangements and, you know, producing my own music every week and challenging myself as a producer to, I don't know, out-arrange other people. I looked at it as a more of a remix contest instead of a performance show because I, I've been performing for years, so I was like, I, you know, I can get in front of a camera and, and right. perform. That's easy. To me, it's the challenge was to pick, my, you know, the best song with the genre that I had to have that week and, mm -hmm. you know, make it the best performance and make it, you know, a really hot arrangement. That's all I concentrated on. And if the beatbox was thrown in, it was yeah. because of that song and that arrangement, mm -hmm. you and know, that I felt that it needed it, you know? Yeah, and you also threw in the dance moves, too. Uh, I got some <laughs> feet on occasion. <laughs> but, we, uh, we saw a few Blake Lewis moves in there. <laughs> a little bit, you know, give it up to... James Brown, Michael Jackson, and Very cool. all the other amazing dances I've <laughs> seen throughout the years. But <laughs> now I want to talk. Right. Oh, you were you were fantastic. It's American Idol. You can't show off that much, but you were able to move around the stage and not just stand there like so many of them do. So we give it's you credit my, for that. It's, it's the ADHD, <laughs> I think. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well you know what? You made it work for you. <laughs> okay, I'll now I want to skip through to the finale of American Idol. 74 million voters, which, I mean, first of all, that's crazy. It's ridiculous. And then, you know. Kind of crazy. That's, I mean, there's only two of you, Jordan and Blake, so they're, they're voting for you guys. And, of course, Ryan Seacrest has to go make it all dramatic when he's, like, going to reveal, you know, who won. And what was going through your mind at that time? I was so, that was the one week out of the whole entire experience that I was mad and stressed out mm. and, <laughs> like, tired. <laughs> so much stuff. Well, yeah, it was ridiculous. It was, like, no sleep and had to sing a song I didn't want to and my plans that I had for the finale mm -hmm. didn't happen because I bit my tongue. Mm. Uh, I was going to try and be total rebellious and, and, uh... <laughs> pull some crazy live <laughs> TV moment but uh oh like know. what what were you gonna do Blake uh well I had a <laughs> vote for a Jordan Sparks t-shirt on um they made me take it off and then in the middle of the song that they made me and Jordan sing like they do every year they make <laughs> you know the contestants sing the cheesiest dumbest yeah. song every year like I'm proud to be an American time of my life uh, yeah. yeah you know I <laughs> just something that I would never sing right but for me it was I was only mad because the whole entire time I'm on the show I got to arrange my own music and it mm -hmm. was you know it was m my song my arrangement right. that they wouldn't let me do that with the, the fun final song I had to sing it exactly the way it was written and that song was not written for me I'm not a ballad Mm -hmm. singer you know I don't do those kind of songs so I was really frustrated with the at, the at the finale but at the same time I got to share the stage with Dougie Fresh which yes. has been you know like a lot a of dream a of lot mine. of big and names on that stage that night yeah you know and so I am thankful for all the opportunities that I was given that you know that mm -hmm. whole entire experience so I couldn't be too bitter about being in the finale uh Oh, not at all. I just want. I just wanted to go out on my own terms, and yeah. I told the wrong person who told everybody. So, <sighs> gotta watch what you the, say. <laughs> that was my. That was my big mouth. You did, know, you, did you? Did you know? Did you have like a feeling that Jordan was going to win, or? Oh, I wanted her to win. I did not want to win American Idol. You did not want to win. No, definitely not. I uh, <laughs> being on the show, I had a lot of mental issues with it because I don't believe in false idols. And the fact that I was in the show <laughs> that's the biggest out of all time directed around who is the next American Idol was, uh, was a big issue for me. So um, 
I was completely just pumped. To me, second place was first yeah. place in my world. So uh, that's it was awesome. great experience, and I had fun. So that's good. I was like, and Jordan deserved her more than like she was perfect for number one. She was number one in my book. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. whole entire time when I saw her audition, I was like, that girl's gonna win. Really? And we all said it. Yeah, like when we saw her in Hollywood Week. You know, we're like, that girl's going to win American Idol. And she did, you know. So I predicted it from the beginning. And I was just happy to be along for the ride, you know, and be all that I could be. Very cool. You know what? I know you said that you don't, you know, believe in the, the idols. But to me, I think the purpose of American Idol is finding these role models and for kids and, and you know, anybody growing up in America. And I think you definitely were a good role model to be different, to be unique and just be yourself. So... I think you are thank an American you. Idol, Blake. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, you're Still, welcome. I, uh, <laughs> there's a whole lot of pressure, though, too. Oh, no. Be idol, so. Just be yourself. That's all the pressure I'm putting on you, Blake. Be yourself. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I now, can be myself. Now, good. We love that, and we love yourself. And, I mean, our Twitter is going crazy right now. People wanting to ask questions. And before we get to some of those questions, I want to talk laugh, life after Idol. Okay. All right, so now you're from Seattle. Yes. Are you still in Seattle? Or are you in L.A.? I just moved to L.A. Oh. six months ago in June. Very cool. And uh, so far, so good. I'm liking it here. Have you tried the chicken and waffles yet, Blake? <laughs> the chicken and what? And waffles. Every time someone goes to L.A., they're like, you got to oh, try wow. the chicken and waffles. Rock those chicken and waffles. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had it here when, actually, when I was on Idol. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, well, that's right. Yeah. American Idol L.A. Wake up, Christina. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you've had two albums under your belt. Yes. Audio Daydream, which came back out in 07? 07. Yep. Yeah. December 6th. December 6th, 2007. And now Heartbreak yeah. on Vinyl is out. Yes, that came out October 6th, um, 2009, Nine? actually. <laughs> yeah. And I love it because it's like the 80s dance side to you. Yeah, just going back to my roots. I mean, I've been doing electronic music for, well, I don't even know. Yeah, <coughs> I like me. it because oh, your excuse. <laughs> um, I like no. it because I get to rock out of my car to it. <laughs> awesome! It's definitely a, a driving CD and a dance floor CD. Yeah, and, and this uh, CD uh, made it number one on two Billboard charts too, right? Yeah, right around actually uh, this last American Idol finale, uh, Heartbreak on Vinyl went to number one on uh, on two charts: the radio airplay for dance music and club air play for dance music so it was huge it was yeah. really great and it was like perfect timing and the stars were aligned and mm -hmm. I finally got my two number ones on Billboard that's awesome crazy. and that makes you the yeah. first former Idol contestant and the only Idol contestant to score number one on both of those charts so kudos to you thank you appreciate it a lot of hard work and the, yeah. the song means uh, a lot to me you know it's, it's uh, kind of about like the fall of the um, music industry that we're in now and how everything's digital and just you know the independent mm -hmm. record store owner there's not many of those around in each state and uh, this one specifically was going out to Easy Street which is open uh, in Seattle oh cool um, where I just bought records you know since I was a kid and mm -hmm. vinyl and tapes and it's not it's uh, it's kind of nostalgic that song you know and it definitely has a very nostalgic 80s feel to it oh yes it, even though know, even the music video has all the 80s videos in it <laughs> yeah you know we and i was just paying homage to you know the uh the pioneers and the people that i grew up with in that song you know it makes me yeah. feel good and and i think you know people latched on to that and mm -hmm. especially the djs that were playing it in the dance community you know thank them so much and it's, it's great to you know hear all these DJs, you know, I've been talking to and, you know, radio personalities such as mm -hmm. yourself that it's connected with. <laughs> yeah. And you actually, um, you teamed up and co-wrote with a lot of uh, big collaborators for this album too, right? Uh, on, on Heartbreak on Vinyl, yeah. I, I teamed up with uh, lots of friends actually and a lot of people in the dance community that I've known for years and, you know, I pretty much a and the whole entire thing and wrote all the songs and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was just kind of a dream come true. I just, <laughs> I actually tweeted a bunch of people. I was like, hey, you want to get together? And that's, I love the power of social media because, oh, you know, absolutely. it's instantly, you know, uh, and it's crazy to find out some people that are fans of you that mm -hmm. you're fans of and, you know, and then great collaborations become, become of it. So. Yeah, and speaking of... I had a 